Am I started? I think I'm started. Hey, everybody. It's know. Smitty here. Uh, let me bring up my stream. Looks like I might be started. Or is it going to complain because I scheduled a thing and it doesn't start for another 19 minutes? Nope. Looks no, like it's started. Start. There we go. Hey, everybody. It's Smitty here. Yeah, I am. Uh, Smitty here. I am. We are doing something weird today. Uh, I am streaming, but I am also doing a hangout with Jeremy. Say hi, Jeremy. Look at the camera. Hi, Jeremy. Look at the camera. They can see you. That's Jeremy, KF7IJZ. He is also streaming right now, so it's kind of a double stream. You might want to try crossing the streams and see what happens. Um, he is assembling his 3D printer that he got from uh, the, what was it, the Midwest 3D printer fair thingy, whatever. So, Midwest Rep Rap Fest. That's Although the I one. didn't buy it there. I ordered it up. I ordered it online, but that's where I saw it. Uh, fair enough. And uh, so he's been assembling that, working on that all morning. Uh, I just got finished watching the Indy 500, which is my one religious sporting event of the year. Um, and uh, uh, decided to kind of hop on with Jeremy, kind of do a little bit of heckling with him. But at the same time, I am also going to be um, working on my SOAR radio, continuing the stuff that I was doing yesterday. <clears throat> so it's going to be mutual yeah. heckling and mutual talking about what it is that we're working on here. It's going to be kind of a conversation. This is very meta of us. It's very meta. You know what I just realized? Let's see, wait, Kenneth says, so actually, yeah, which stream does Kenneth watch? Well, he's on yours right now. Yeah, literally, let's see. Camera Trying on. to unburn my living room and lab Camera. have done projects, kind of declaring project bankruptcy this weekend. So you know what they say about that, limit your work in process. And if you're anything like me, F that noise. <laughs> How can I look busy if I don't have 42 projects going at the same time? Stop starting and start finishing, Kenneth. That's what she said. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, with having as many projects as we do is that we always want Although, to. Uh... What I have to give you, I have to give you props. Me? Yes. Uh, okay. uh, you have you have been very diligent on the sore project since you picked it up like this has been you, you know i mean seriously like half half the struggle of getting stuff done is actually holding yourself to getting stuff done and uh you have done a fantastic job of staying you know staying the course or whatever jason so jeremy look at your screen see that uh it's no but bunch, what is it it's a bunch of audio transformers and some trim pots uh, it's an audio mixer with a compressor and more importantly a noise gate on it that i started building to put into my car that i can use as a um for my stream folks uh use as an audio mixer to mix the speaker levels from multiple different radios uh into a single amplifier to send up to the front of my car to a single speaker so that's a project that progress project that is in progress that I stopped to work on SOAR. Do you see this one? I remember the clock. Yeah. Remember the clock? That's another project that is in progress. I got to a version one, found some problems, and needed to make some changes to it, and have not done it. I put this one on hold. Uh, do you see this? <laughs> yes. That is another 10 amp, 12 volt switching power supply uh, with constant voltage and constant current outputs. This is one of three different models of this kind of thing that I have that I am in the process of trying to get rigged up to charge the battery that runs the radios in my cars. Uh, so yeah, but, I, I, but I think you're being too hard on yourself because I have no, like everything you have just shown has been something that you have originated since I've known you. And honestly, like since I have seen you go through all these projects, you have spent the most time on SOAR. I'm going to stop. I want people to be able to see what you're doing, too. What does Kevin say? Uh, Osh Park, bring a hack, light a fire under your ass. Uh, so projects get done very quickly in early May. For those of you who are afflicted with the problem of having to choose to go to Maker Fair or anything else. That is very true. The SOAR project was a two-week before Maker Fair. Oh, crap. I can go to Maker Fair. I need to have a hack to bring. I have plenty of hacks. I know. I'll start another one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate the credit. Um, I've been going kind of hardcore on SOAR because it's something 
that I think will benefit the community more than any of the other stuff I've done. The other stuff that I just showed you is a lot of um, kind of special purpose, one-off builds. I don't, I don't see these turning into kits, right? I don't see, see these turning into things that I am likely going to be um, uh, putting in bags and selling to people. Sore is something that I can see that turning into. And because of that, I have kind of had higher motivation to, to keep working on SOAR for the last few weeks. Adam Smith thanks you. Who does? Adam Smith. I don't know who that is. So the uh, father of economics. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're just saying uh, as, a, as a thank you for continuing to spur innovation and selling things in the, in the world? No, to, to prove uh, out theories on motivations and activity and such. Um, I don't know, man. I'm putting together a 3D printer very poorly. Have you heard me banging on stuff? Yes. Generally, by the way, rule of thumb, when working on delicate instruments, if a hammer is involved, you're probably doing it wrong unless it's for good reason. <sighs> Step 26. So I've been streaming now for four hours, and I have made it to 20 steps, which is about 23% of the total steps. So you're looking at a uh, 16 to 20 hour build time? Uh, that will probably actually finish sometime around Labor Day, yes. I can't wait until I have to start cutting G2 belts and then tensioning them. So this is cool. Do you know how uh, do you know how you tension these belts? Uh, besides the, the physics, I mean, there's a there's an app you download, and uh, it's basically I think an audio spectrum analyzer, and you pluck the um, you pluck the belt until it rings at 41 hertz. That's how you know you have the proper tension, which as, as a geek I, I love. And I'm sure you can appreciate that as well. I keep pointing at the wrong camera. I keep forgetting that your viewers are seeing that camera. But my viewers can see that camera and that camera. So I was giving you the universal sign language for yes when my mouth is full and I've got my, uh, my microphone turned down. What are you eating? A kind bar. I haven't had lunch yet. Sure. I'm a California hippie freak. Of course I am. I know. So for uh, for Hamvention, I asked. So George last year had a cooler of uh, Pelic San Pellegrino water, and uh, apparently his friends heckle him about that too because they're like, "Oh yeah, George bathes in that. That's all he will bathe in." But then I said, "Because last year we did a really bad job of remembering to eat," and so I said, "What do you guys want?" And George, like I was like, "You guys want some granola bars or something?" And George was very specific about kind bars. Fortunately, they were on wicked sale, so I got him some kind bars. So I like kind bars because I am gluten intolerant, and you do not want to be anywhere near in the county with me if I have gluten in my my system. Um, in your butt? You said in your butt. I did in my system. Um, it's actually my intestines that are really the problem. But in any case, um, so kind bars are very good about being gluten free. I also try to be low carb, although yesterday I kind of did a rolling somersault tumble off of the wagon on the carbs. Um, but um, the kind bars tend to be relatively low carb for what you get out of them. And they're just simple ingredients, right? It's not all of the processed crap. There's no high fructose corn syrup, um, all that jazz that I try to avoid. Yeah, I'm a Californian. And the reason that George has to bathe in Pellegrino is because it's bottled and imported because we have no water in California. That's the only way he's allowed to take a shower is by using imported water into this damn state. So as I have said numerous times, I would move there in a heartbeat were not for the fact that I love my freedom, my money, and water. Oh... Gather 12 FSH screws and 12 T-nuts from the frame hardware bag. Check. Uh, loosely install two screws and T-nuts in the holes for the tower extrusion slot in each corner bracket of both the base and top assemblies. 
the Tina goes inside the slot. Oh, that doesn't help me. If only there were a picture. Yes, okay. Continues to be as expected. You're muted again. That's fine. What are my listeners or my viewers saying? Calibers make a great hammer. Once. We got kind bars for free all weekend in MFBA. I like BAMF better because for the longest time I thought everybody was talking about going to be bad A mother efforts. Uh, well, David McKay. Okay, I'm watching Smitty stream. With both chats up. That is weird. <laughs> David McKay, that's a friend of yours, yes? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, he's been popping in and out of my chats a lot on my streams. But, um, well, I don't know. David, do I know you in real we... life? If I do, I don't know you by that name. Well, the funny, you know, the funny part about this is this shows that I've gained viewership because of my appearance on your stream. It definitely goes the other way, too. Hey, speaking of uh, terrible movies, by the way, you know another movie that was absolutely god awful? Uh, Suicide Squad. I, want, I mean, I'm not a big DC guy to begin with, but I love Will Smith. And the, I, there's so many things that could have gone right. Just in the end, they decided to make sure it was nothing went right. I'm not a huge comics guy. I kind of miss comics and I kind of miss D and D growing up. Both of those. How things. did you miss? How did you miss D and D? I got into D and D when I was in college. Yeah. I didn't do it when I was a kid. I had see. My dad worked for IBM. My mom was a network engineer at the local high school. So I was into BBSing and computers at a very young age. Oh. Do you remember Legend of the Red Dragon? Uh, no. Door game? Lord? Legend of the Red... No, I was a Barons... Barons and Trade War were my two games. Okay, I remember Trade War. Yeah. Legend of... Anyway, I met the author of Legends of... Uh, or Legend of the Red Dragon um, at one point. It was it was a truly monumental day in my life, but I, I don't remember his name. Uh, apparently, David's mom lives nearby here, and there's a your mama joke that, or anyway, no, I don't make those kinds of jokes. Oh, hey, Bill. Um, yeah, David. Next time you're up here, um, throw me a message on Twitter, and we'll see if we can meet up for lunch somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, Santa Maria is about a half an hour south of where I work, so depending on what time you'd be here, uh, the time that would work best for me, just from a scheduling standpoint, is to meet up for lunch while um, while I'm at work. But that I would need you to come up to San Luis Obispo for that. Excuse me. But yeah. By the way, is know, it? Let me know next time you're up here. What's is up? it uh, appropriate? Is it appropriate to refer to that as slow? Yeah. Or yes. SLO. It is not inappropriate. Either of those are appropriate. Whatever you do, do not call it San Luis Obispo. It is Spanish, not French. It not is San French. Louis. <laughs> oh, that's my only requirement. All right. You know what I think is I'm, I'm actually not far from is actually putting the top and bottom together by way of the giant meter long rails sitting here off camera. So someone was recommending RF isolating the grounds on these two radio modules. I think that was David, wasn't it? Or was it... Um, Bill, someone. I thought, um, it, I thought it was your other friend, the guy you actually do know. Um, exploding lemur, Nick. No, it wasn't Nick. It was somebody your daughter knew who it was. Tim, you have a oh Tim? Travis, uh, train man, Travis, not Travis. Good God, that's his brother, Austin. Austin, that's it. Austin Hendricks, yeah. Uh, no, David was the one who was saying that I should isolate the grounds on things. Um, Sorry, David. So. The real cowboy. <laughs> the what? See, I can't have both. I, I don't have both uh, Twitter. Dang it. What am I doing? Crap. Um, da, 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 da. There we go. Um, I can't have both chats up at the same time. So if somebody's saying something in your chat, the real Cal Poly, what do you mean? the re Oh, as opposed to Pomona? As an SLO, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're out of presentation mode. I don't know if it did that on purpose or what, but. 
I, I, I took us out. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, you were showing things. Well, fair enough. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to try and split my screen so that I can see both of our chat windows at the same time. Just so folks can see what I'm looking at. Oh, Ah, David McKay is a PCB designer for a living. Oh, God. So why are you watching my stream? It's like, oh, the amateurs making crap up as they go along. I have immense respect for you, sir. Me or David? David, of course I don't have any respect for you. My mic level dropped dramatically. Uh, is that because I haven't been talking into the mic? Whenever I do this, it drops pretty dramatically because Heil, say what you will about him and wannabes, Heil is, uh, does a really good job of, of rejecting outside sound or off-axis sounds on his microphones. It's okay now. All right, so I just need to remember to talk directly into the mic. Yeah, so now I've got two uh, chats, chat windows up on my screen. This is entertaining. Oh, why do I get the feeling I'm not actually going to get anything done today? So, David, um, if I understand correctly, I want... So I should probably go ahead and define a separate ground symbol for each of these and then link all the ground symbols with inductors. <laughs> so I got I got David McKay and Rob Morley who are both professional circuit board designers and they're looking at me going what in the hell are you doing? You like coming onto these channels so that you can uh, uh, <laughs> feel superior? <laughs> Here's a guy who's a complete novice at this, but is willing to do it on camera. So let's go watch him. Sounds about right. Yeah. did it again. Oops, you did it again. Jeremy? Yes. Don't ever do that again. But if I do, then I'll have to say, oops, I did it again. I sang that damn song. The Jeremy? one that you hate. Jeremy? Oh, Smitty, Smitty, yes. Jeremy. You said heckle. <sighs> True. Sound like my mom, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy. Or actually more my wife. Jeremy. Jeremy. I'm not singing anymore. Uh, oh nanofarad. Let's see here. I'd have to go run the math to figure out what that goes down to. Uh okay. So because of the RF, it would be best to split the grounds. Yeah, using separate ground is good, or you can use one ground and just remember to use the small plane areas. Then make a tie point that has the inductors or caps tie across them. Well, I can't use caps to tie across them uh, because the caps would have to shunt and, um, you know, shunt to ground, but I'm doing this on ground, so I'm not entirely sure what that would look like. Shizen Pooper. Shizen Pooper? Shizen Pooper. Yeah, that's a good one. Son of a bitch. Okay. <sighs> hey, you guys are intimidating me. 
Uh, David McKay is saying, the biggest board I ever worked on was 16 inches by 22 inches, 32 layers with 18 BGAs. 16 of them had almost 200 pins each, and all the BGAs had buses that connected them all together. Are you laying out like um, uh, like a network switching board or something? Something for the space shuttle. Oh no, Mars rover! He says one of the sa- uh, one of the smallest was a camera that folded up into a box that went up on a Mars rover. Hey, so I was pretty close to being not right. far off. Yeah, two thousand pins each. Dave corrected himself. He had apparently typoed. Jeez. Well, then what the hell is a guy like you doing watching me too? Uh, I, I, again, it's the uh, the let's go chuckle at the noobs. put power down to the signal. Yeah, I think I do. Do it, do it. Do it. You can do it. You can do it. What? What? There we go. That boy ain't right. Can I get a what, 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 what? Probably not. Wrong subgenre. That's what I thought. Uh, PD. Are are you being paged or are you just having a hard time breathing? I was supposed to be my Darth Vader. Oh, well, okay. I, I got the Darth Vader reference. I'm just curious. Never mind. I'm good. Hold on. Holding. <laughs> I find your lack of RF choking disturbing. You want to know what kind of family we're in? Those are in my dining room. My wife is the one who brought the cardboard cut out of the stormtrooper into the house. She is a arguably a bigger Star Wars fan than I am. Not even arguably. I think it's pretty well, clear. This is a wall of sci-fi. There's uh, two lightsabers, a bunch of R2-D2s, uh, all of the ships of the line for the Enterprise, and miscellaneous other stuff that my wife and I have come across in our relationship. I think there's a, a Doctor Who um, sonic screwdriver back there. Of course there is. Okay. Um, for those watching my build, I, I've gotten all the T-slot things in. Is there anybody still watching my build? Eight of you, hello. For those of you who just, sorry, public service announcement. For those of you who are just joining uh, or who may not have sat here for the last, you know, four and a half hours. Uh, this is Jeremy ko 7 ijz from the Ham Radio 360 Workbench Podcast. Uh, today I am assembling a 3D printer. It is the Ultabots D300VS, uh, available at Ultabot, ultabots.com. This is a Delta-style 3D printer with a 300 millimeter uh, uh, diameter print bed, the 450 millimeter top or max height, um, all premium components and uh, it's a do-it-yourself kit and uh, I normally hate stuff like this because things like this happen which there's a cut on my finger so anyway I'm live streaming it as motivation to get it done with me today is Mark Smith Smitty Halibut online who is working on an amateur radio project called soar which we will actually have Mark on the show at some point to talk about this he just got back from Maker Faire just like we got back from Dayton I did and for folks watching on my stream, uh, hi, I'm Smitty Halibut, in case you just joined me. And uh, 
Uh, I am working on my satellite optimized amateur radio. I finished version 1.0 for Maker Faire and uh, ran into all kinds of problems with it. And I am going in to correct those problems and making a version 1.1. Uh, my goal is that 1.1 will be stable enough and similar enough to the final product that I'll actually be able to send out one or two to some other folks who are going to help me out with some software. Uh, I've got at least one person lined up for that, so that'll be good. Um, and Jeremy has become a friend of mine from the Ham Radio 360 podcast, and so uh, he was streaming today. I decided to stream today. We are kind of merging our streams and doing some weird stuff. Uh, Just a couple of guys streaming, no big deal. Nothing to see here, move along, nothing awkward. Um, and yeah, so you'll hear him talking about his project, you'll hear me talking about my project, and uh, and we'll go from there. If you're not familiar with him, he's KF7IJZ on, uh, that's Z for us Americans, KF7IJZ on uh, YouTube and Twitter, and yeah, go check him yeah, out, he's got a lot of cool stuff. Why, thank you. Live dashboard. That's the one I wanted. What am I doing? Where am I going and why am I in this handbasket? Nope. And where are my kidneys? Oh, those. Man, I lost those a long time ago. Okay, not really. So one of these screens has a you've been streaming for this many minutes thing, and I can't find it. Really? Yeah, I really like to know how long I've been streaming, and I thought this was the live dashboard that had that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. There should be three T-nuts left from the frame hardware bag. These will be used to mount stuff later. Okay, preparing the towers. Remove all T-slot covers and save for later. Okay. So, switching back to the camera. I think my YouTube got confused because it claims that I'm offline as well and that there's nobody watching me, which I know there are people watching me because they're t chatting in the chat room. So I'm so confused. Okay, anyway, sorry. I'll shut up and keep working on my stuff. That's fine. Um, for those watching the build... Uh, this, I mean, these are basically the vertical rails. Again, they're about a meter long. Um, pretty excited about it because it's huge. This is a huge printer. It is the most big lead printer I've ever seen in person. This is the part where I put the box through the window. Oh. Man, I bet you, well, actually, I know how much this printer weighs. When it's assembled, it weighs 35 pounds. Just like it weighs about that when it's not assembled. All of this hardware comes from Open Builds, and they do such a phenomenal job. Uh, the quality is just top notch. There's got to be a better way to draw those because that is so ugly. That is one, yeah, okay. There's got to be a better way to do this. I'm going to break this up into two different things. So you can't actually see my, uh, my the work that I'm doing, can you, Jeremy? Nope, all I see is the camera view. Okay. 
I could I could open your stream in another window. Yeah, let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Uh... Screen share. That's what I'm looking for. Application window. Um... I think that's the one. So now you can see the kinds of things that I'm doing. Although it's going to be pretty low res for you, so I don't know how well that's going to work out on your stream. Uh, I'm not streaming you at the moment. Okay. Because I'm playing with big rods. So. Like you do. That, that's yeah, as you do. That's that's compelling content, I say. Uh, locate the threaded hole at each end of these things and mark it with a small piece of tape. Now I have Britney Spears stuck in my head. You're welcome. Yeah. Although, actually, technically, isn't that my own fault? Pretty much. Pretty much, yes. Oh, hey. Right, row. Locate the threaded hole at one, oh, one end. Okay. Okay. I was like, if this is supposed to have threaded holes on both sides, we have a problem. Just put that anywhere. <laughs> well, I'm handling the, uh, the big pieces now. I also got short of a T slot cover. Uh, I wonder why you mark these with masking tape. I'm sure the following instructions will tell me, but I'm impatient. Shoot, okay. Biscuit. Do you just like the sound? It, it's making me chuckle a little, I, I admit. I'm actually building things over here. <laughs> As opposed to those of us who are just drawing pictures with crayon. Yeah. Well, you're using a mouse, but installing the towers in the base. Base. Threaded, threaded hole in towers to the outside. Position the base with the XYZ labels facing. Whoa, now. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is a this is a major assembly step on my side. This is like the first time that the true scale of this printer becomes apparent. Okay. Huge fan of that outline outline layout, but it's better than some of the alternatives. <laughs> 
position the base of the XYZ labels facing on a flat surface, aligning the T-nuts in the X corner pocket. So the tower extrusion slot can slide onto them. The end of the tower with the tape marked threaded hole inserts into the base. The threaded hole should be on the outside edge. Slide the tower extrusion over the T-nuts, push the tower all the way down to the table, then tighten the two screws. Do this for all three corners. Here's the part where I find out I've lost the, uh, the uh, Allen wrench that I need to do this. Huh. I'm going to need more space. It's not you, it's me. Sure it is. I just need to find myself, Mark. Does he say Titan? Yeah, he says Titan. That's one. This is kind of a big deal. Oh, I am scratching the crap out of this tabletop. It's okay. Your wife won't mind. Well... It's an Ikea table. We bought this table when we moved here because we're like, we need a dining room table. And I will probably wind up building uh, our real dining room table because <laughs> I need another project. Of course we do. Much like, a hole, much like a hole in my head. It's just like when I started rebuilding drawers for the kitchen. I got two done, and then I've got a bunch of sawn stock downstairs. It's all dado and ready to go for, the, for what remains. But everything else takes up time. I can't get, they don't pay me to stay home and build drawers. No, you kind of need to be a carpenter for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my 10 microfarad cap doesn't look connected. Are you talking about that lack of junction right there? Uh, there we go. Fixed. Uh, Kenneth says you have both found very special women for your life. Yes, I would yes, agree. Very, very true. I don't think I told you, but I recently came home. There's, I, I heard an interview. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but in the interview... He talked about that he finally cajoled his wife into getting her amateur radio license. And as it turns out, amateur radio played a very major part in their lives uh, for the remainder, I mean, until now. Because uh, they, she ended up getting into the expeditions and contesting and stuff like that. And so they went on cruises and on the expeditions and all kinds of stuff for family vacations. Jealous. So after hearing this, what's that? Jealous. Sorry, go on. Tell us what. Jealous. Okay. Oh, jealous. Sorry. So anyway, I told my wife about this, and I, I came in and I proclaimed, congratulations, amateur radio is now your new favorite hobby. How'd that go over? Uh, you know, I haven't really seen her since, so I'm kidding. Um, what's sad is she, she's really interested in she, – she actually really got super interested in CW when I was, I was practicing it. And uh, I got a couple of practice oscillators, and we would sit, this is before we had kids, or shortly after my daughter was born, and we would sit in the night in the living room and just look at each other and send CW to each other to practice. And that was a lot of fun. And I was like, how would you like to amp it up a notch by sending it to other people? And then she's like, no. Nope. I was like, okay. Sad thing is I feel like, so she, um, she was a fencer in college. Ah, yes. And the... The thing that she always liked about fencing was that it was you're much in competition with yourself as you are your opponent, right? And uh, so things where she could be in competition with herself, she greatly enjoys. And what's sad is contesting is an awful lot like that. This thing is huge. This looks like a model prop from the episode of Star Trek with that like triangle spaceship thing. Do you see this? Do you see how huge this thing is? It's huge. 
It's huge. It's bigly. That is a big 3D wow. printer, man. What are you going to print with that thing? Um, a full-size Hermione one for my daughter, since oh. she pointed out how, how inadequate my existing printer is. No, I could print out garbage. Literally, I could print a garbage can with this thing. That would be impressive. Uh, I was so ungodly happy to get to hang out with April Wilkerson and Laura Comp woodworking you. Yeah, I know April. I don't know Laura. I saw the picture. That was cool. Is she as nice as she seems to be? I didn't realize that seeing selling stolen goods was that competitive or that you're <laughs> No, she was uh, at bay, not, not selling stolen goods. Not that kind of fencing. Not that kind of fencing. All right, I'm going to step away. Mark, you should comment to your viewers who actually care about what you're doing as opposed to listening to me read instructions so they make sense out loud. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I am currently trying to RF choke all the things. Um, so one of the problems that I didn't actually confirm was a problem with my radio, but seems like a good idea to do anyway, was that I, uh, I don't, I wasn't choking any of my digital signals. Um, everything I was doing in and out of the radio went straight to the microcontroller. And so any noise from the microcontroller would go straight into the radio, uh, and vice versa. So I am putting... RF uh, series inductors and shunt capacitors on all of the uh, oh, excuse me non RF uh, non RF paths in and out of the radio. Uh, so all of the digital signals, all of the serial ports, uh, the power in the ground, and everything. I am uh, filtering all of that with uh, trying to do some RF shunting on those to make them a little bit cleaner. Um, I am also doing the concept of uh, splitting, let's see, what am I doing? I am splitting the RF grounds from each of the modules and separate from the ground itself, so, or the, the, the digital ground. So you'll note that the ground pins coming out of the module here don't actually tie directly to ground. They tie to this node here, which is going to be um, uh, the shunt path for a lot of local uh, power storage, a nanofarad, a 1 microfarad, and a 10 microfarad. Actually, I might want to change that to like a 0.1 to kind of even that out. Anyway, um, so that'll be my bypass voltage or bypass caps on this radio going to the local ground so that there isn't an inductor between that bypass and that radio. But there is an inductor between that ground and ground. Similarly, there is an inductor between the voltage coming in and the V battery. And so what I did, the other thing I did is I split V battery from V3.3 because I'm going to put a regulator on the microcontroller so that the radio modules themselves will run straight from the battery, but the microcontroller will run from a 3.3 regulator. Uh, the new module that I'm going to be using doesn't like having variable voltage. The old one, the uh, AT Mega, would run on anything between like 2.7 and 5.5 volts. So I could just run it off of a, of a lithium-ion cell without any regulation, and it would have been fine. Um, but the new module is not quite so generous. So I'm splitting out the raw battery voltage, which this thing will run off of. And I'm going to run a 3.3 regulator into the micro uh, because it does not like having raw voltage. Sounds like Rob Morley and David McKay are having a good conversation in the chat room about uh, uh, their jobs and time doing circuit boards layout. Uh, just remove the section you are doing now and copy and paste the one you just finished. Yeah, Cop yeah. HiCat is weird about copy and paste. Um, I also don't want it to accidentally like tie some of those nets together. Um, I do it in some cases, and the tying the nets would have been fine, but um, I didn't because lazy. You know, Kenneth likes to mock me for doing things the hard way. I mean. What kind of a host would I be if I uh, if I didn't do things the hard way to give you guys a chance to mock me? That's what the peanut gallery is all about. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Copy block. Make you feel better? 
you and your desire for efficiency. <laughs> Whatever. I'm looking at and keeping track of though. Oh. Okay. So those are all the RF chokes for audio, audio, digital line, serial port, not on the radio because I don't want to choke out RF out of the uh, antenna. Uh, got some on the high-low. Oh, that's the other thing is that I, oh, hey, I got to edit these. So this is PDU and edit that one. That's going to be HLU. So I am since I have more I.O. pins, I'm going to go ahead and control the power down and the high power versus low power from the micro. We've got the pins for it, so we'll go ahead and run those over. That is a lot of choking. Oh. Do I want those to choke here or there? I think I want those to choke to the main ground. Is that right? Do I want those to choke to the main ground or to the local RF ground? Um, shoot. I think I want that to be the local RF ground, don't I? Because I want that all to be contained inside here and then go through that inductor before it and get blocked off from there no because these are all on the outside of the inductors oh. So if I do a bypass, if I do a, uh, does KiCad not rename for unnamed nets when you, no, it does, it does. I am I misspoke, Rob. Um, right now I'm trying to think about where, what ground I want these caps to go to. Do I want this to be the digital ground on the outside or do I want it to be the module RF ground here? I think that one I want to be, the one on the outside of the inductor toward the micro, I want that to be the micro ground. If I had that capacitor on the inside of the inductor, I think I would want that to go to the RF ground. Um, shoot. Do I want to make this a Pi network? That seems overly complex. I don't think I need that much filtering. I think that'll be fine. Exactly. Remember, guys, that when you are talking about things, there's about a 15 to 30 second delay between when I say something and when you respond to it in chat. So if you're responding to something I've just said, there's a good chance that I don't remember, or at least I've moved on mentally from what I said to what you said. Okay, so Rob and Dave are both agreeing with me that a Pi network is overkill. So these capacitors on the outside of the module should go to the digital ground, which is on the outside, right? I don't want, because I don't want to be passing any RF. If I, if I ran this to the RF ground, that RF would have a path to get out. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Talking about the caps, inside versus outside. Okay, so it sounds like, oops, sounds like we're all in agreement that that's the correct way to do this. Um, okay. Yes, main ground, okay. All right, so David, does this uh, meet your needs on separating the grounds for the different radios? Um, oh, that means, shoot, hold on, that, shoot. You okay, Jeremy? Oh, that is a ice maker. That's what that is. You know what? I need to tie that ground and that ground to that ground. Shoot. All right. I've got other grounds. So one of the things that I don't like about KiCad is that I'm not 100% clear on how I rename a ground symbol, a power symbol. Um, so if I edit that, there's a value 
But there's also the net name. I thought value. If I change that value to be ground V, for example, for VHF, that's the chip name. If I edit that one. So I, can, I was never sure whether the chip name or the value was one that's actually defined what net it's on. Um, so I think I want, I'm going to set both of those to ground V, which means ground V's component, ground V not found. Okay. Really? So can I not create a new net here? All right. Ground A, I thereby define you as the VHF ground. This is going to be ugly. <coughs> you okay there, Jeremy? Well, remember, I'm sick. I've got a cold. Oh. So I'm all like sniffly and stuff. That's fantastic. Every power symbol is its own. You can rename it. You can't rename it, uh, but you have to use a different power symbol. I think, totally not sure, best I can tell, no warranty, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I know you definitely have to use different ones, and I could probably go into the library editor and create new ones, um, but I'm lazy, so I am going to use existing ones even though the names are not immediately obvious as to what they are. So I've got an analog. We're going to go ahead and use ground D because, sure. Okay. While well, you're doing ground D, we're getting ready to move on to step 29. I'm almost a third of the way through this build. I'm only 10 hours into it. Okay. It's a major achievement. Oh, N3VEM is watching your uh, your channel. I can't tell if he's yes, he on my channel. Well, he's over at my channel uh, trying to get free printing work out of me. Oh, well, okay, fair enough. Well, I told him if he designs it, I'd be happy to print it. He wants a uh, mounting bracket for his E57. Ooh, good call. Although I'm guessing he meant just the head. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Just let it go. Um, let it go. You too. I gotta get my Let daughter. I have to force my daughter to stop doing that. Have you guys gotten the affliction that is Moana yet? Oh heck yeah! Yeah, actually, what's sad is I I can't. I'm a secret admission. I can't stop listening to it, and the songs go through my head at least once a day. They're great songs. They're absolutely f yeah. fantastic songs. Um, but you I know, didn't realize that it was the guy from Hamilton. That yep. Did a lot of that. Oh yeah, we knew. We are huge Hamilton. We are a huge Hamilton house here. Never uh, seen it. Or heard it. Okay, uh, go listen to it. It is phenomenal. It is absolutely the the best musical ever, in my opinion. Even if you can't if you can't see it. Even if you can't see it, yes, the music is enough to absolutely impress you. Well, first off, let's start here. Are you at all into hip hop? Uh, some. Okay, if you at all like hip hop, if you can at all respect hip hop, then this this musical will blow you away. Okay, um, I can highly respect hip hop. Okay, um, this this musical yeah. will absolutely blow you away. It is worth it in spades. Holy cow! This printer has feet. How else is it uh, going to stand? Switch to ground uh, reference speed. Nope. Okay. This is all our ground a top layer stitch. 
I never, oh, hey, choking, that one I did. Um, actually. Where's box B? By the way, uh, live streaming and building stuff is tiring. <laughs> yes, it does. I mean, seriously, I feel like I've been performing for hours, and it, you just don't. Um, I don't know. I didn't really give it the credit that it deserved. Well, that's why I usually go for about an hour or two, and I'm like, you know what, guys, I'm done. I'll be back tomorrow. Maybe not. Yeah. Remember that I have the uh, the extra pressure of being. I got to get this printer done. It, like this, this project has to finish. Well, so, we've been saying that about your um, your power battery pack. box. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh god, I can't wait for you. Did you listen to any of our dating coverage? Uh, I listened to the first episode, and I'm halfway through the second episode, but I haven't finished did, it yet. Well, did you hear the the segment where uh, Jason from Comms to Go heckled me about that? Yes, he. Yes, I did. And then George sent me a text today and said, hey, by the way, do you want me to shoot a video of your power box design that I built? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to finish that series for you? Is basically what he's saying. I have all the stuff. I do, I do, I do. I've got it all. Yep. You were, you were talking earlier about uh, starting projects and finishing them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. I, I've, I've oh, a... actually, my 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 crown jewel um, slacker project. Uh, you're in a hi fi. I'm in a hi fi. Um, yes. When I was an undergrad, I really coveted this single ended tube amplifier kit by this company called Bottlehead. They're out of um, the Puget Sound up near Seattle, mm -hmm. and uh, it's this two watt. Hi-Fi amplifier based on, uh, I think they're 60 and 7. They were television tubes. They're dual triodes. And um, I had heard one that I knew an adult that had built one. Phenomenal. And the kit at the time was only like three or 400 bucks. But I never had the cash for it when I was younger. Anyway, for Christmas one year, my wife finally got me one and got me all the upgrades for it. And it is sitting in my basement in a container uh, half-started. All the all the hardware is populated on the main amplifier plate, but nothing is soldered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I I am so at Maker Fair at the Osh Park Bring a Hack party. I ran into a guy, a man, met a guy named Ron Kwan, uh, who Kenneth was nice enough to help me get hooked up with after the fact because I didn't get his contact into info while I was there. But he, so I've been doing all kinds of headphone amplifiers. Just go look at my stream. I'm actually listening to you through one right now. Um, but one of the designs I've, I build is not one that I came up with, but it's a hybrid tube amplifier. So it uses a 12AU7 for the voltage gain, and it follows it with an IRF510 uh, to make the voltage a low impedance voltage so it'll supply the current. It's a great little design, and it works well, and it's easy. It's low voltage. You only have 12 volts on the plate, so you're not going to kill yourself building this thing. It's a great little design. But it still has that FET in there, and the FET is going to not flavor the sound, right? So it's it's not a bad thing. Um, it's not going to destroy the tube sound or any crap like that. I mean, you still get the nice, uh, nice uh, sounding tube out of it. But... I really kind of would love to have an all-tube headphone amplifier, and Ron introduced me to a series of tubes called Space Charge Tubes, which were originally designed for use in automobiles back in the 50s. And so it is, okay. a, it is a power tube that is designed to work with a, uh, with a low plate voltage, like less than 30 volts, uh, designed yep. to run directly off of the 12-volt batteries. Yep, that's... Go ahead. Uh, so the 12K5 and uh, the uh, 12DS7. Uh, the 12DS7 are the tubes that he was using, and the 12K5, after doing some Google research, seems to be kind of the more common one, the kind of the more uh, typical one. Powered. It's a uh, tetrode, so four four components: the the plate, the cathode, and then two grids. Yeah. Uh, and you use it like a triode, and you just tie the first grid, the one that's closest to the cathode, uh, to your plate voltage. And it being so close to the cathode but still being a grid, 
it provides that positive charge very close to the cathode, which will accelerate the electrons, but be, still being a grid, it's going to miss most of those electrons. And so basically, it's just a way of getting that cloud of electrons from around your cathode and getting them moving toward the plate. And then the plate's high voltage will actually pick them up from there. And so it's a way of increasing the amount of the number of electrons, the amount of current flowing through the tube, even though you've got a low plate voltage. Yes. Um, and so I bought a bunch of, well, I've got six so far, uh, 12 DS7s, and I'm actually going to start looking at some 12 K5s as well because they seem to be um, kind of interchangeable. And I'm going to be working on a headphone amp design on those uh, because, again, I need yet another project. So what's interesting about my bobblehead sex amp, which is the single-ended experimenters, it's the same concept for the uh, 6DN7s and the 6SN7s, which is what they're sourcing now. Um, and you can either build it as a hi-fi amp or a headphone amplifier. Um, it's, I mean, it's a single-ended design. So you basically have, you have the pre and the power all in one tube. And, um, and there, are, there are custom output uh, autoformers. So it's good, it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, the, most of the designs I found for the 12 K5s and the 12 DS7s, excuse me, involve output transformers, but uh, Ron's did not, and that is something that I really want to. Yeah, I have, that's awesome. I have e emailed Ron asking him what kind of a plate resistor did he use on that, um, because. Uh, you're going to be losing a lot of your power. To that plate resistor and he just used a high value dc blocking cap uh you know at the plate between the plate and the resistor off into the headphones and it's i can't imagine how he's getting any sort of efficiency out of that and so i'm asking him some questions about like what pl what value plate resistor is he using that kind of thing but um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this well cool yeah yeah there's there's a um Oh my lord! I don't remember who. It's been so long. I mean, this was two thousand four that I was looking at this stuff. Two thousand three. There was a very famous um, monoblock uh, headphone amplifier that based on the similar series of tubes, and it used a um, an output transformer that was still widely available, made by Hammond. Oh yeah, you and, can uh, you can build the whole thing for under a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, I mean you can definitely get um, what the hell? Oh, you can definitely get um, output transformers still, but I I I was intrigued by Ron's design that did not use. Come on, come on, Smitty, pay attention. That did not use um, output transformers. I want to see how he did that. Uh, because that's just a big, heavy block of iron that if you don't need... Yeah, then you should avoid it. Yeah. But I, I suspect his is going to be a heck of a lot less efficient because of it, though. Yes. Oh. Oh. Heavy printer is heavy. One grid, oh. then screen, oh. then anode. Oh, so Kenneth is, is correcting me that there's a grid and a screen. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um, let's see. David says, okay, I'll look though. He asked about what was the power module we were talking about. Um, I said, I think I already have that worked out, but it's not a single box at the moment. I would like to make a box for my 817, the battery and stuff to make it all self-contained. Okay. Um, just spread out of this panel and turn on the switch and of course connect to the antenna. So mine is literally just a power module. Um, there's no radio in the box. This is a, like I said, it's more of a solar generator. Uh, I was fortunate enough in my life to pick up um, two power film 120 watt foldable panels. I have a 40 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate prismatic, four cell prismatic battery uh, with top balance, um, top balancing modules on each cell. I use a Genesun uh, charge controller. And the reason that I picked them is, first of all, they will do custom voltages for lithium chemistries. Uh, second of all, actually, the first reason was because they're RF quiet. The guy who designed these charge controllers actually is a ham. 
Um, his primary customers in the beginning were, if you've ever seen those orange trailers that your Department of Transportation wheels out that have a solar panel and like a like a road work sign. Um, so yeah, good stuff. Uh, still in production. The the custom voltage didn't used to be important, but it is now because I really, for package batteries, I've started using batteries by a company called BioNO. And I like them because I met them at Dayton last year. I said, send me one of your batteries. I want to do a test on it to see how it performs. Because uh, the closest other major product was the former A123 systems. And now NEC uh, makes lithium iron phosphate modules. Uh, and for the price, 99 bucks for an 8 amp hour battery. You should. I have a test video on this that I run it through a lot of paces and charge or discharge conditions. And I'm very happy with the quality. Oh, yeah, great bats. My, um, the only thing that sucks about them is they need, because of the circuitry that they're using inside, the cutoff voltage is 14.6 volts, whereas most lithium iron phosphate, just native batteries are 14.2 or 14.6, or sorry, 14.4. Um, so my charge controllers, I, I'm, I'm starting to build a little, in a little ammo can, a box that can I can use to recharge drone batteries as well. Uh, but I'm going to have to have my charge controllers programmed, which was nice. They said, send it back, give us 50 bucks, and we'll, we'll change the voltage for you. At least that was an option. I begged them to, you know, send me the firmware or, I mean, I, there are JTAG headers on the damn board. So, okay. Man, most of the stuff on my YouTube channel has been around solar operating. Some random. I'm going to start a YouTube channel called The Crappy Woodworker, except it won't be The Crappy Woodworker. <laughs> like, seriously, I, my videos on woodworking are more about what I've learned not to do. Uh, that's just as important a lot of the times. Yeah, sometimes more important. Yeah. Oops. Hey. Uh... uh... So I have to warn you that I've got some uh, family showing up here in just a few minutes that I'm going to be taking a break to go say hi to them. They're just stopping to use the restroom on their way through town. That's fine. I got to warn you that I'm going to still be standing here trying to put together this stupid printer. Ah, stupid printer. It's not stupid. Not stupid. Actually, now there's wiring involved. Step 30. If I complete this, I will be a third of the way done with the build. Um... Yeah, the other amplifier, uh, did you ever build a chip amp? No, because like, I am a headphones guy. I do not really do speakers. Oh. Uh, but I have, so, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I've, I've seen the chip amp and been really impressed with it as, a, as an idea and as a concept, as a project that is super easy to do and super achievable and attainable. The funny thing about this is talking about unfinished projects. I've forgotten that I had started a chip amp. Uh, design and I had gotten so far as hand building the rectifier and getting the transformer working. So I had my 28 volts output or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, last time I was at my parents, I was going through some of my old boxes and I found all the components, like all of the output capacitors and the, all the hard mounting hardware and everything and the power supply, everything I needed except for the time to put it together. You know, when my biological father died, this is what his house looked like. I swear to you, there were 45 started and unfinished projects laying everywhere. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's not just you and your biological father. I've I've got it here, too. Yeah, but we're not dead. <laughs> Neither were they when they built up their collections. Yeah. And just so you know, don't feel awkward. He was a piece of trash. My, real, my dad is my stepdad. That's got why I qualify him as biological. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Um wires okay pro micro be gone with you that heat sink is huge that's no heat sink that's a space station huh all right michael i don't think you're watching anymore but yeah i just found a spare parts bag thank you old bots <laughs> it has spares for everything except for the thing that i needed spares for well that's good Okay. Um, 
I am going to take a break because the next step up for me is to create a teensy in the library editor, which is going to take some time. And I kind of want to take a stretch and, and maybe go get something to nibble on before my sister and brother-in-law show up. So um, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to let the stream continue going, but I'll be back in a bit. <coughs> Can they see me? Can my sister and brother-in-law? No, your audience. Uh, yeah, they've been able to see you the whole time, except for the fact that you've got a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a bag, what of, looks bag like of parts. A, yeah, you have a bag of something on the screen right now. Yeah, because I'm showing the, the step 30. Yeah. Uh, all right, go enjoy your pee break. <laughs> but yes, the people on my stream will be able to see and hear you. Good. All right, I'll be back. Locate, locate the end stop hardware bag from box C. Check. Um, there are three pairs of red black wires with connectors at each end. One end has a black connector that holds the pair together. Uncoil the wires from this end. I'm not sure what that means. Thread the black, sorry, thread the black connector into the slot and down and out the bottom of the X tower as shown in the picture. Why only the black wire? This doesn't make sense. Okay. And folks on Smitty's stream, I am, oh, David has posted bunches of stuff. Uh, that's the bet I have too. I haven't checked the output bolts on mine, but I will add a booster circuit in line if it needs to get to a constant 15 volts. Uh, it's not 15. The the top off um, the constant voltage voltage for bioino batteries is 14.6. Um, I mean, re remember lithium. Actually, I'm sure you know this. The and for folks who care, um, the charging algorithm for lithium battery lithium chemistry batteries is stupid simple. It's constant current to a point, and then it slowly transitions to constant voltage. Um, and uh, yeah, it, the circuitry they use is why they need to go 14.6. I've not tried putting it on uh, the other way. Like I've not tried putting it on something that I already have. I've charged their batteries off standard bench power supplies. But yeah, they're, they're good stuff. They have all the protection circuitry in them. Although when Mark gets back, David, I'm going to have him tell you the story of what happened the first time he put his bio battery on a, uh, on a power supply. Let's just say the thing started drawing. Well, yeah, I'll let him tell me. Uh, who, me? Yes. I, so I was just, David also has a bioino battery. And I told him when you got back that I would ask you to tell the story of what happened the first time you plugged your bioino battery into a power supply. Uh, if you're just trying to float it off a power supply, they do not do charge current limiting in the battery itself. So uh, the first time the battery was... Um, here, let me stop screen sharing so people on your stream can actually see me. Stand by. All the switching. You are screen sharing. Well, turn off that screen share then. There we go. It's me now. Um, so the first time, uh, if the battery is at all discharged, it will try and charge. And unfortunately, it charges as quickly as it can. So it does not limit the charge current in the battery itself. So I had my battery hooked up to my power supply. It was charged when I hooked it up, so it didn't draw a whole lot of current. We lost power, and by lost power, I mean I flipped the switch on the uh, uh, on the power supply to test it. And I ran everything off of the battery for a while, and it was running great. And then I went ahead and turned on my power supply again, and it jumped up from about normally 2 to 3 amps constant current with all the stuff I have on it to about 25 to 28 amps. And so it was trying to charge at about 25 amps. And it did that for a minute or two, and it was you know slowly dropping over the next couple of minutes uh, until it dropped down to a reasonable charge current. Uh, but BioNO says that the charge current on these things should be about 4 amps. And so, Yeah, so if, if, if your battery is, I think, 12 amp hours and above, you can do 4 amps, according to them. Uh, mine's but 20. Actually, this is, okay, yeah, so again, yeah. 4 amps. Yeah. But this is how Smitty and I met. This is the first time that you, you ever sent me a message. You're like, hey, I hooked it up to a power supply. You drew 20 amps. Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
uh, because I I had listened to your stream or not your stream your episode on on um, uh, 360 workbench about the batteries and whatnot, and I was trying to hook up. I wanted to have a battery as a backup for all of the 12 volt gear in my office. Excuse me, and I just wanted it to be, you know, always always being charged by the 12 volt supply in here. And, you know, floating it would be a great way of doing it, except for the fact that it doesn't char limit the charge current. And so that's what sent me down yeah, the path of trying to design a battery charger where the current limiting sensor is not on the output of the power supply. I want to be able to design a power supply where the current limiting sensor, I can put it on the terminal of the battery and let the power supply charge both the battery and supply energy to the... Um, uh, uh, to the load, right? So if my load is drawing thereby, five amps, say again, go yeah, ahead. There, I was going to say, thereby, thereby treating the battery as nothing more than a load in the circuit. As treating a, the battery as a load in the circuit, but it will adjust the output voltage of the supply so that that load gets no more than the the 10 amps or the, the four amps that it needs to charge. But since it is the four amps for the battery plus the, let's say, five amps for the rest of the, my radios and my Raspberry Pis and all that crap, it, the power supply will actually put out nine amps because the battery is getting its full four plus the five of the constant current, you know, the constant supply. Mm -hmm. So that is another project that's in the back of my head that I have not started down the path of, and I don't, I don't plan on doing that one anytime soon. I've got other things working. I got other things I'm working on. Well, we've had some good thought work on it. Oh yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a someday project. But actually, I came back because I wanted to let you know that I am going to uh, uh, stop my stream. I need to. I haven't had lunch yet, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon here, um, and I I'm realizing how hungry I am. So I'm going to take a good break and and uh, get some get some food in me. Um, I probably will not be getting started again on my stream tonight. Um, I'm probably just going to take the rest of the day off from this. And um, having said that, I am going on a business trip tomorrow. I head up to Seattle tomorrow. So I will be in a hotel room with nothing to do in the evenings, which means I may be continuing to work on this from my hotel room, which I will start. Where's your, where's your hotel? Uh, in Seattle. No, duh. Where? Uh, I was gonna re I was gonna recommend an awesome place to go and get coffee and cupcakes. <laughs> well, I can't do the cupcakes, and I've got uh, plenty of coffee sources. Um, that, that aren't Starbucks. That aren't Starbucks. Yes. Okay. Is they, Stumptown one of them? Stumptown. Uh, I can't remember if I've been to Stumptown. So I'm in the well, South Lake Union area. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. I was gonna have you go up to an awesome place in Ballard, but. If you don't want the best coffee available in Seattle, which is made in Portland, so there there is a, a there is not a stump town that I know of in Seattle, but there are places that sell serve stump town coffee, and so it is amaze balls. There is a barbecue place in Portland called Stump Town, which is the place that put me on to pork ribs. Before their pork ribs, I had never had pork ribs that were worth eating, but they definitely I, are. I wonder if there's actually a city called Stump Town in, or if that's like a neighborhood. No, I think it's a nickname for Seattle or uh, for Portland. Ah, uh, well, you have a safe journey, my friend. I you will. will uh, I'll, I'll finish coordinating with you about the uh, podcast. Okay. And we'll see you when we see you. Sounds good. I think we're going to be looking at uh, Saturday morning, right? Uh, yes, and we'll figure out the deets. If anybody is on Smitty's stream that wants to follow along on the 3D oh, yeah. printer build, uh, just search YouTube for KF7IJZ. And uh, yeah. Yeah, go watch. Uh, go watch, finish watching Jeremy. He's doing some good work there. Uh, we're going to need to rely on Kenneth to do the heckling, though, because I am, uh, I'm, I'm going to take the rest of the day off here. All right. Take care, buddy. All right, man. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching me. You know who I am, Smitty Halibut, S-M-I-T-T-Y-H-A-L-I-B-U-T. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. Tell me what you guys are doing. Tell me about your projects uh, and uh, keep things going there. And, uh, yeah, until next time, be good humans. All right. Cheers. Cheers.